All right, so let's say we have a position time graph that we're going to look at. So we're going to look at how our position changes over time. We're going to pretend that's straight, measure this in seconds, measure this in meters, and go positive or negative. Um, in here, positive, negative just refers to direction. Typically, if we're dealing with positive, that's going to be to the right or upward. That's just the kind of convention we're going to use. And if it's negative, it's going to be to the left or downward, depending which way you're looking at it. So hide this, get a red pen. Let's say we do this and then this. What's happening here? So we graph these things over time because we can leverage, leverage some uh, clever tricks from geometry and uh, mathematics to kind of make sense of what we're looking at. So if we look at this, which is really a change in position or a displacement, right? So we take that displacement um, and we have a linear graph here. Um, well, if we have a line, lines have slopes, right? We did this in math class. So a slope, how do you find that? Well, it's rise over run or the change in the Y over the change in the X. So what's our Y in this case? Well, the delta Y is the displacement, your change in position. Delta X, that's your change in time. So you have distance over time. So the slope on a position time graph is going to tell you velocity in whatever units you're using. This would be meters per second because it's meters and seconds. So slope tells you velocity, distance over time for a position time graph. If we were looking instead at a velocity time graph, where this is telling you velocity over time, um, and let's look at something different. Let's look at this and this and this, All right? If it's constant, well, that's the same velocity the whole time. Now be careful. When the position time graph was constant, you're at the same position. So really you're at rest. You're not moving. You're at the same position. But if you look at a velocity time graph and it's constant, you're at the same velocity. It means you have a velocity so you are moving here at a constant velocity. Constant velocity. As soon as that starts changing, now you're accelerating. You have a change in velocity. Um, let's try our slope trick over here. So slope, again, delta y over delta x. Our delta y, in this case, is the velocity, the change in velocity. Our delta x is a change in time. Now, a change in velocity over a change in time, that's literally the definition of acceleration. So acceleration, you get from the slope of a velocity time graph. It's literally asking, how quickly is the velocity changing? Okay, so slope, acceleration, velocity time graph. One last thing. If we look at the area underneath the graph, we end up doing something kind of clever. So if we find area, let's look at that rectangle. So area of a rectangle is base times height, right? Just the two sides multiplied by each other. That base here is time. That height is a change in velocity, right? So if you have that, um, I'm sorry, it's not a change in velocity. It is the velocity. That height is certain velocity. Here it is. What you're getting is velocity times time. Now, if I rearranged this, delta t, delta t, velocity times time gives me displacement. That's just this same equation rearranged, d equals vt. Distance is velocity times time. By calculating the area underneath this graph gave me displacement, velocity times time. So um, the area underneath the velocity time graph is going to give you displacement. The velocity or the slope of that graph is going to tell you the acceleration. And if you go to position time, the slope is going to tell you velocity. It's important to keep these things straight and know which one are you looking at at any given time.